Hey y'all, welcome back to the Browse Bunch or welcome if you're new here, I'm Courtney. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm not, it's not like a theme or anything. I'm just cooking a few different things in the kitchen and thought I would bring you guys along with me. Um, we've got a snack, we're gonna make some supper, probably a dessert, maybe I might make some guacamole too and then like a drink. So stick around, hang out with me. We're gonna be cooking. I did get this new kitchen gadget here. I'm super excited because I've always wanted a stand mixer and this pretty color makes me even more excited about it. So I'm gonna be using that to make a couple of these things and then a couple of them are just some stuff that I wanna make. So let's get to cooking. I know I'm making some um, homemade Cheez-Its, chicken flotulas, I think that's what they're called, I don't know, um, strawberry lemonade, and we'll just see what happens. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you're not already. Thank you Quizamax for sponsoring today's video. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually unbox this and just kind of show you what all it comes with because I'm really excited about it. Um, and they were kind enough to send this to me and they gave me a discount code if anybody else is interested in a stand mixer as well. I'll leave that in the description box below. It's just code Courtney. And um, so that was really nice of them. So open it up. I cannot get over how pretty this is. It's got the stainless steel on top. You can literally see me through that. It looks so pretty. And then it's got this hook, the mixing hook, and the dough hook. So this actually has suction cups on the bottom of it so that it doesn't move when you're trying to make something, which I think is awesome. And yeah, see, <laughs> kind of loud, but boop, boop. Um, so that is really cool. So also, besides the suction cups, which is a really cool feature, it's got this little button that you can just press with one hand and it will just pop right up. How cool is that? And then here it's got the normal whisk on it, your stainless steel bowl. One thing that I'm really excited about this for is this shield that it has on here, this plastic shield, and you can dump ingredients down in there to keep it from flying out when you're mixing it. And I know I've said this in a, um, or kind of complained about it in a video before when I'm shredding chicken in a bowl with a hand mixer, how it gets everywhere, because it is pretty messy, but I, it's totally worth it to me because shredding chicken um, with a mixer is totally like the way to go. It is just so quick. So I am excited to use this with that especially, um, just to save on the mess and time. So. That is gonna be really handy as well. I think I was excited to try this out. Let's get to cooking. Okay, so for the chicken flatulas, if I'm saying that right, <laughs> I have to catch myself every time because I have no idea. I've got two chicken breasts cooking in the Instant Pot and then I'm gonna shred them in the mixer. And then the rest of the ingredients are sitting out here. So I've got my flour tortillas. I've got some Fiesta Blend cheese. I'm gonna chop up this onion. And I've got three garlic cloves here and I'm gonna mince those up with the best garlic mincer ever. Seriously, this Pampered Chef one is awesome, just saying. Um, and if you didn't know, I do. I am a Pampered Chef consultant, but just literally because I love the products um, and I like to share them with you guys. So I will leave that in the description box too if you guys want to look at that. Because um, you don't even have to peel them to use this. Awesome. Anyway, I've also got some olive oil. We're gonna do some corn. We've got half a cup of sour cream and then a cup of salsa. And then I've also got some butter that I'm gonna melt. And I've got the oven preheating to 400. And as soon as the chicken's done, I had to cook it for one more minute because it wasn't quite done. I'm gonna let it cool off for a couple minutes and stick it in here and shred it. And then we'll start assembling them. Okay, first thing I'm actually gonna do is heat up some olive oil, about a tablespoon, well, that is a tablespoon, um, and then cook my onions and garlic in here just to saute them a little bit, get them softened. So I'm gonna cook those for a few minutes, then I'll add in the corn, salsa, and sour cream and stir all that up, and then I'll remove it off of the heat. And now I'm gonna add in about 
Uh, three fourths of the can of corn, the half a cup of sour cream, and the cup of salsa. And mix it all together. And once it's mixed together good, then I'm gonna take it off the heat. I also need to add the chicken to that mixture. So this is cooled off a little bit and I'm just gonna add it into the bowl. This is only like the second brand kind of video that I've done and I would never do this on things that I wouldn't personally use or like be interested in myself because I've turned like I've not even paid attention to several that come in my email. Um, so this one I will give you an honest review. But so far just like aesthetically, it's beautiful. So I put this kind of the mixer hook on I'm just gonna stick it down. Now I'm gonna start it. Let's see how loud it is. Oh, it might help if I plugged it in. <laughs> I usually probably wouldn't have that open, but I wanted you guys to be able to see down in there. Let's open it up and see what we've got after just a few little bit. Oh, wow. So just after that long, the chicken's almost all completely shredded. I've got a couple bigger pieces here that I'm gonna stick in the middle so that they get done. I think it normally takes like uh, 30 seconds to a minute, so it still hasn't even been as long as it probably should. So let's go ahead and shut that back again. One thing that I'm not, like, it's not, it doesn't snap onto the bowl, so it's still kinda, it's just a shield, basically, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I would say that is some really good shredded chicken. Seriously, if you've never used a hand mixer or a stand mixer to do your chicken, you definitely should try that out. It's a time saver for sure. And the stand mixer makes it not near as messy. There was no mess. No mess all over the place or me. <laughs> Probably could have used a bigger pan, but whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken in now too. And instead of dirtying up any dishes, I'm just actually gonna stick it right in here. Stuck it in this. Sometimes I'm a hot mess in the kitchen, y'all. <laughs> These attachments are also really easy to get off. You just have to twist them the opposite way and pull them right off. Same with putting it on. And then this thing just slides right off, but it like hooks in place because it's got these little rubber things around the edges. So easy, easy cleanup too. I've got a fourth a cup of melted butter here. I'm gonna do about half of it on the bottom and just kind of let that melt around. For our tortillas, I've got 10 of these and you literally just put your mixture on it. So you just wanna spread out your mixture all over it and then roll it up tightly. Pour the rest of the melted butter on top. I stuck them all in a nine by 13 pan and then bake them in the oven on 400 for 15 minutes. how they turned out I actually put the broiler on for a couple minutes well not even a couple minutes it's like one minute just to crisp them up a little bit on top and get that nice color and then we've got some yellow rice on the side now time to eat supper oh and I was gonna make some guacamole but didn't realize that my avocados were not ripe yet so I will still be making that and I'll share it but we won't be having it with supper like a one and two tonight but that's okay and I looked up the pronunciation of these and it's not whatever I was saying. I was even reading the spelling wrong. It's flautas, something like that. I'm sure it's still not sounding right, but yeah, I'm aware I was saying it wrong the entire video. 
y'all may have noticed by now or maybe you didn't i don't know but i completely left out the cheese so travis has got some dipping over here for himself some salsa and sour cream and i'm probably gonna go heat up some cheese dip to dip it in um it was supposed to be a cup and a half of the fiesta blend cheese and you would have done that after you mixed the chicken and all the other ingredients together not on the heat and then you know just put your mixture on the tortillas so whoops i can tell it's missing the cheese but it still tastes pretty good so i'm sure it tastes amazing with the cheese in it i've actually made these before but it's been years so but anyway just thought i would let you know that <laughs> okay for the next recipe we're going to attempt to make some strawberry lemonade i don't really have a recipe or anything that i'm going off of so i'm totally winging it so if this doesn't turn out i'm sorry but either way i'm taking you along with me We've got this lemonade concentrate that you get in the freezer section at Walmart. We're gonna try to make that up just like it says with the directions and then put some Sprite in it and these sliced strawberries with sugar that is also in the frozen section at Walmart. So here goes nothing. First, I'm gonna go ahead and do what the instructions say on this lemonade. You apparently, I think my mom used to make these canned lemonades, um, but apparently you open it and replace the can cap loosely microwave it and then add three cans of water with it and mix it really well. on the lemonade we've got our lemonade mixed here and then the strawberries <laughs> I've got them sitting in hot water because I took it quite literally when I read on the container to, that, where it said keep frozen but there's no way you can make anything with those if you kept them frozen you have to thaw them out first which I did not do clearly I've even tried putting them in the microwave they're still really really frozen together so I'm gonna let them sit for a while in some hot water and then be back in a few and we will continue <laughs> Y'all, I'm so impatient. I've done open this and taken a knife to it, but I got one out to try. And y'all, these are good frozen. And I'm normally, like, I normally don't eat frozen berries because I just don't like the taste of it at all. I'm sure the fact that these are good has everything to do with the fact that they're in sugar liquid, but it's all good. I'm excited to see how this turns out now, even more so because that is yummy. Uh, like I said, I'm impatient, so... They'll probably break up more into it anyway, but I feel like that's good enough. <laughs> ah. Don't want it to splash on me. There we go. Hopefully they'll break apart a little more. This is kind of reminding me more of a punch than a lemonade though because of the Sprite, but either way, I'm excited about it. It already changed it red completely. And now I'm gonna fill it all the way, the rest of the way up with Sprite. Gonna stir it up really good and then we'll try it and see how it tastes. Ooh, that pours nicely. You got some of the strawberry and everything in it. Now let me try it. Okay, that's actually really good. They actually taste a lot like strawberry lemonade. I thought it was going to taste more punchy because of the Sprite, but it tastes a lot like strawberry lemonade. That's really good and so easy to do. That's going to be even better after I chill it in the fridge, I'm sure. And there's plenty of strawberries in it. That's really good. Y'all should definitely try this. That'd be a perfect summer drink. For this recipe, we're going to make some homemade Cheez-Its. I feel like this is the most random bunch of recipes I've ever made in a video, but it's just a bunch of stuff that I've been wanting to make, just haven't like tried it out yet. So that's what this video is. Um, so for the Cheez-Its, we got a cup of flour, some sea salt, a cup of shredded cheddar cheese that I grated myself, and then three tablespoons of room temperature butter, tablespoon of all vegetable Crisco, vegetable shortening, whatever you want to call it. And then um, we've got some ice water here. I'm not exactly sure how much I'll need of that yet though. First thing we're gonna mix together is the three tablespoons of room temperature butter, a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. It's sharp cheddar is what kind I'm using. A teaspoon of sea salt, 
and then one tablespoon of Crisco or all vegetable shortening. Mix that together until it's combined. Now I'm going to add a cup of flour and then mix it until it's just combined. One thing I've noticed so far about this mixer is you want to definitely make sure that this locks in place once you push it down because there's been a couple times I didn't have it actually locked and then it popped back up. It says, the recipe I'm following says to either pulse it or mix it on low speed. So I'm just doing the minimum on here. Now I'm gonna slowly add in two tablespoons of ice water while it's running and then we'll go from there if I need to add more. But I wanna make sure that the mixer's running while I do it. Here is how the dough came out. I only scraped the bottom or around the edges once and that was before I started adding water. And I ended up using like two and a half tablespoons I believe of water to get this. So now I'm gonna take some into three sections and just pat it out and make a little round, little round disc type thing here. Get on some parchment paper. I'm gonna try to get three of those. Now that I've got my three little patties here, I'm gonna wrap them in some parchment paper and then stick them in the freezer for at least an hour before baking them. Okay, real quick about the Cheez-Its. I was making these and I clearly cannot read. I'm like, this is why I don't experiment with recipes a lot before I share them. I usually like know what I'm making and I make it and follow it pretty well, you know, with the recipe that I'm following. But this one, for some reason, I can't read and I was not supposed to put them in the freezer. I was supposed to put them in the refrigerator for an hour up to overnight and I did overnight because my parents and my brother came over for supper so I didn't have enough time to do that in between. And so when I went to go get them out the next day, I was reading the instructions and then I realized that I wasn't supposed to do that. So I had to wait a whole nother day for them to thaw out in the refrigerator. And since then, today, I've been letting them sit on the counter at room temperature for about 20 minutes. And hopefully, I don't know, they might need a little longer than 20 minutes. I don't know. Hopefully they will turn out, but if not, I know why. Um, so, yeah. And like I said, a lot of these recipes are just random. They're just things that I've been wanting to try out. And then I wanted to try a couple of them out in the mixer. The Cheez-Its, like, I'm not really against buying Cheez-Its, but I just thought they would be really good and, you know, less preservatives and that kind of stuff. I'll probably never get to a point where we don't buy food that has preservatives in it. That's just not us. That's not us at all. Um, but I just thought I'd try them out. So hopefully they're going to be good. Got the oven preheating to 350 and we're going to go ahead and roll these out and cut them and stick them in the oven, hopefully, if it turns out right. <laughs> I unwrapped it. Now we're just going to roll it out and kind of fix the edges as we go so they're not cracking. Now you want to cut them into about one inch squares. I'm just going to kind of little bit of eyeballing here. Luckily this little cutting mat that I have has measurements on it. That's kind of cool. Well, that one is very crooked. What in the world? If you have a pastry cutter, this would be really neat to do. So you'd have the cute little edges as well, but I don't. So I'm just using a pizza cutter. But use a knife or whatever you have. And mine are clearly not going to be perfect, but uh, it's okay. Now, I am still going to keep these edges, but I'm not going to do anything fancy to them. The little extras. But for the actual squares, I've got a little skewer here. I just happen to have some of these up in the cabinet. And for aesthetic purposes, but also so that they cook up the proper way and like really steam, I'm going to put a little hole in the middle of them. And that helps them to look more like Cheez-Its too. <laughs>
And then just repeat this two other times with the other two round ones that you have. Stick them on parchment paper, on a baking sheet, spread them out, and then cook them on 350 for about 12 to 13 minutes till they get kind of lightly browned around the edges. And then we'll take them out and test them. This video is clearly proof that not everything I make and while I'm making it definitely does not always go as planned or turn out right, but it's totally fine. That's part of the fun in the kitchen is testing things out. Hopefully you're not too disappointed by this video and you still get some ideas out of it and maybe some entertainment along the way as well. I don't know, encouragement to try things out even if you've never tried them before. Just for fun, cooking is fun. I feel like I got away from that for a little bit, but I'm back to like, getting excited about cooking and trying new things out. The crackers are done. A couple of these did get a little burnt and they kind of taste like it. They're still kind of hot, but I went ahead and tried one. And they're actually pretty good. They taste kind of like cheese. It's not exactly, but you can definitely tell that that's what it's going for. So this is definitely a good option if you are somebody that wants to make homemade snacks, you know, for whatever reason that is, so you know the ingredients that are in it. And I think this is definitely a good option. They will store in the refrigerator for up to a week, and then if you want to freeze them, they freeze up pretty good too, I believe is what, according to the recipe, that's what it says that I'm following. I'll leave everything in the description box as usual for you guys so you can look at it yourself. But yeah, we're probably going to eat these up. <laughs> Y'all, I didn't think my avocados were ever going to get ripe enough to make this, but I'm finally able to make easy guacamole. I've heard really good things about this um, Pampered Chef guacamole mix. You literally just do one avocado and then one tablespoon of this guacamole mix, and you've got some yummy guacamole. Um, I tried to do it the other day with an avocado, but it wasn't ripe enough yet, so here I am trying again. And then we'll see how it tastes compared to normal guacamole. You obviously won't have like the textures and stuff of normal guacamole, but I've heard really good things that it tastes just as good, so we shall see. I don't think it can get any easier than this. I used two avocados, so I need two tablespoons of mix. Now let's give it a try. That is really good. It's kind of weird because you can taste all the flavors, like even thanks cilantro. Just like normal guacamole, you could taste like all those flavors. That's really, really good for guacamole flavor. The only thing I'm missing is like the extra crunch you get from like red onions or stuff that's in it. But if you just need something quick and easy like to take somewhere or if you're having people over and you just want something super quick to put together, oh my goodness, that is really good. I am impressed. I'll probably be making a lot more of that because it's just so easy. And I'm pretty sure this will last me a long time. I've only done like three tablespoons out of it and it's that full still, so that's pretty good. It is the next day today and the cousins are over, so I thought I would make them some yummy cookies. And I've got all my ingredients setting up. I'm gonna mix them. I gotta mix the dough and then let it stick in the refrigerator for at least an hour. It says up to overnight, but that ain't gonna be happening. Um, so for the ingredients for these, I'll go through it as I'm making it, but just an overview. We've got some brown sugar, regular sugar, vanilla and egg, butters in the microwave, just sitting because I googled how to um get butter to room temperature quickly and it was like i'm not gonna i didn't go into all the logistics of why and everything but i cooked um i put a cup of water in there 
in a microwave safe bowl for two and a half minutes I believe and then immediately took it out and then stuck my butter in there in little slices but I've got a stick and a half of butter literally just sit it in the microwave and then it'll kind of heat up to room temperature without cooking it and then here we've got two and a half cups of flour we've got a cup and a half of chocolate chips then we've got a little less than a cup of M&Ms I kind of eyeballed it it's the mini M&Ms because that's just kind of extra <laughs> and then we've got some salt baking soda and cornstarch so so first thing I'm gonna do is cream together both of the sugars so we've got a half a cup of regular sugar one cup of brown sugar and then we're gonna cream that together with the stick and a half of butter or three it's three-fourths a cup of butter but that equals a stick and a half of room temperature butter I'm gonna lift this up just so you can see that didn't take long at all and they're creamed together pretty good so now I'm gonna go ahead and add in our egg and tablespoon of vanilla I'm just gonna go ahead and try this little slot out. Whoop, there it went. And then our tablespoon of vanilla. And get it started going again. Combined really good. So now we're gonna work on our dry ingredients over here. Before I add the dry ingredients to the wet mix, I'm gonna go ahead and whisk together my two and a half cups of flour, all-purpose flour. And then we've got half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking powder, and two teaspoons of cornstarch. We're just gonna whisk that together, then slowly, gradually add that into our wet mix. <laughs> Does anybody else make a huge mess with flour or is it just me? <laughs> For this part, I took the shield off around it just so I could add in my dry ingredients a little bit easier because I don't wanna be making an even bigger mess trying to put it through the small thing on the side. But this is pretty tall, so I really don't think it's gonna make much of a mess anyway. I'd say that did pretty good. There's really not even any like extra dry except around the edge and that's not like thick or anything. And you just want to combine that until it's just combined, not overly mixed. <laughs> I transferred my dough into a separate bowl just so you could see it a little bit better. I honestly probably just could have kept it in that metal bowl, but this way you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. Um, but normally I'd probably just leave it in there so don't waste another bowl. Now I get to do the fun part of mixing in the chocolate chips and M&Ms. You just want to fold them all in. Now we're ready to roll out some cookies. I've got my cookie scoop. We're just gonna stick them on a baking sheet, cover them with some saran wrap and stick them in the fridge for an hour and then we'll be ready to bake them. Anyway, I've got them covered and I'm gonna go ahead and do another baking sheet as well, but I'm gonna stick these in the freezer for an hour, not the refrigerator, but the freezer for an hour and then we'll get them out and bake them. Took them out of the freezer. Now we're popping them in the oven on 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. 
Okay, so that's gonna be it for this video overall. I thought I would give you just a little rundown of what I thought about the mixer, the stand mixer. Um, first off, I love the color. Secondly, I mean, I think it's like a decent price compared to others on the market. So that's a huge plus with the qualities that it has. I think like it, so far I'm loving it. Let's just say that. Um, I love that it has the suction cups on the bottom so it's not gonna move on you. The button that you can just press to open it. And another thing that I really liked, um, aside from this thing where you can lift it up and add ingredients as you're going, which you don't even have to have that on all the time. You can take it off. But I know a lot of mixers, I thought at least, that I've seen in the past is like when people are baking stuff that you have to take it out and scrape it. I only did that once and it really didn't even need it. So that's kind of cool. It felt like it got around the edges pretty well. The only thing that I'm not really sure about yet because I haven't been using it very too long is the sound of the motor. Like you can tell that it's working pretty hard. Um, but so far it's good and all the reviews that I've seen are really good on this mixer. So if that tells you anything, I will have a code and leave the link for this mixer in the description box below. It's code Courtney for 15% off if you guys want to check it out. I think that it's definitely a decent price for what you get. The size bowl and just the three attachments that comes with it. And it seems to do really well so far for me at least. Um, and the price point I feel like is decent compared to others on the market for sure. So but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And thank you guys so much for being here and supporting me and my channel. Hope you guys have a good day and I will see you in the next video. Bye y'all.